I came to the NEC over in Birmingham to the UK's solar and storage show and here's everything that I found interesting. So DAS, I'm a big fan of the DAS solar panels. Uh, they have actually climbed to number seven globally for supply in the world. Uh, so they, in my opinion, are a rising star. Now, this is very interesting. This particular model is an all black uh, module. It's gonna go up against the um, ICOs. Uh, now, they are looking at 475 up to uh, 480 watt in these modules. So this is a standard size panel, 1134 by 1760. 24.3% efficiency and they can cram 485 watts into this. This, I'm gonna have to test. I'm gonna have to see it to believe it, but uh, DAS are very confident in uh, what they're gonna put out. So look, time will tell. We're gonna see this panel hopefully Q1 of 2026. Now this is an interesting product for anybody who doesn't have uh, solar but wants to benefit from using cheap uh, EV night rates and using that cheap rate during the expensive day rates, this could be an option. So this plugs directly into the consumer's socket and will actually feed AC power into your circuit um, or pull AC power as it needs. Now it's CT monitored so it guarantees that it does not feed back to the grid which is kind of cool because it means that you don't need to apply to the ESB for an NC6 application. Um, it has a max discharge rate of 2.5 kilowatts, but you can parallel three of these together to have a max discharge of 7.5 kilowatts. It will also charge AC at 2.5 kilowatts, but it will go down as low as a couple of watts and it will discharge, you can set that within the app, it will discharge at a couple of watts up to 2.5 kilowatts, or you can set it so that it only comes on at 800 watts uh, when that demand is there. No, this is not a scene out of 2001, a space odyssey with the monolith. Uh, this is the Anchor Solix, the famous Anchor Solix that's all over the internet at the moment. Some stats on the five kilowatt uh, module um, and the batteries that go along with it. So it has a startup voltage of 75 volts. Um, it is stackable up to 15 kilowatt hours. One battery module, it can AC charge at three kilowatts or 3.5 kilowatts. And then if you have two or more uh, modules, it will charge at the full five kilowatts AC. Units are IP66, so uh, well suitable to outdoor usage. Interestingly, uh, you can, in theory, uh, take these batteries down to 0% depth of discharge. Now, how much of that I believe, I'm not entirely sure, unless there's a reserve in there that they're not telling anybody about. At the moment, they don't have a wireless CT uh, option, so you're gonna have to be near uh, the actual board. Uh, to put this unit in, but apparently that is in the works. 100% DC, so you can put 10 kilowatt of DC power onto this inverter. Voltage is 600 volts, so this seems to be coming the industry standard in the more modern inverters. 10 year warranty, and uh, it seems to be the single phase market that they are chasing uh, on the domestic side only, compared to a lot of the other uh, inverter manufacturers which are chasing the commercial and industrial as well. And this is the EcoFlow battery. Uh, again, dealing with five kilowatt modules, uh, power inverters. This is stackable up to 15 kilowatt hours. Now, apparently you can parallel them, but you need another inverter as well, uh, rather than just paralleling the batteries. Depth of discharge on these guys is down to 95%, or sorry, down to 5%, so you can use 95% of that battery power. You can load this with 11 kilowatt of DC power. Start voltage is 95 volts. Interestingly, you can put, you can ram 10 kilowatt DC as long as there is available space in the battery and you have uh, the sufficient power, no load on the house. You can ram 10 kilowatts uh, into those batteries uh, up until they hit a certain point. Have an ATS, uh, automatic transfer switch, um, under one second and uh, it will run AC output of five kilowatts. AC charge rates, uh, so for your EV window, is two and a half kilowatts per module. So if you want to charge at five kilowatts, you're going to need two modules.
of the big selling points is that these EcoFlows come with its own like little iPad that's magnetic that sticks onto the inverter or you can have it sitting in your kitchen that will display the information. It comes at a cost um, and whether that cost is worth it to you for that kind of fancy dancy tech, up to you. So it seems that the Anchor and the EcoFlow fall into one category and they fight against each other. And it's interesting to watch because they are both putting massive marketing dollars uh, into trying to uh, take that market from each other. Uh, EcoFlow are one of the main sponsors of the battery, uh, solar and battery event in Birmingham. Uh, and then Anchor have the character uh, Darren from Anchor Zolli. So. I think this is probably the biggest surprise that I've had in this show. Uh, I was not expecting such a product out of this company. The company is Goodwe. Um, I think in Ireland it's an unheard of brand, even though, again, they're another massive Chinese company. Uh, it's unheard of in Ireland. And the SIG Energy all-in-one stackable inverters seems to have stolen the Irish market. Uh, and I think this is a good alternative to the SIG Energy because there are problems with SIG Energy. The 10 second app refresh is, a, is great in theory, um, but 10 second app refresh just comes at a heavy energy cost. And I've heard now, I haven't had it confirmed, but I've heard rumors that it could be up to a kilowatt hour in the day. Now, if you have a crap day where you're trying to stay off grid as much as possible, and this unit is just taking one of those kilowatt hours just to keep your app refreshed, that would annoy the living daylights out of me. The other thing that I don't like about the SIG Energy is that it ha the installer owns the keys. Now, if you know me, I'm a decentralized individual as much as possible. I do not like handing my power over to somebody else. And so an installer holding the keys, if you want to add a battery or put in a gateway, uh, add an EV charger, you have no choice but to use that original installer. And then what happens if that installer goes bust? So. I think this could be a very interesting alternative. So let me run through some of the stats. It has a 50 volt startup. That is probably the lowest voltage startup I've seen of any inverter. I mean, kind of 100 volts was typically the lowest, but 50 volts of a startup, absolutely amazing. This is stackable up to 48 kilowatt hours on one module. Uh, and it is all interconnected. So from an installer's point of view, it's one battery on top of the other. There's no cable connections or anything like that. Now I've yet to find out if you were to put 48 kilowatt hours, there has to be some sort of extension cable. Now, interestingly, it will do full five kilowatt offload or backup load. We'll do that seamlessly, apparently. Uh, it has the inbuilt warming plates. It's got fire suppression via aerosol, which seems to be kind of industry standard at the moment. Uh, but what is interesting and really has me very interested is that this will take a generator backup. So you can run a generator through this inverter directly into a priority circuit in your house, or you can use it to charge the batteries. And you can set the parameters. If it has a dry uh, start and a pure sine wave, then pretty much any petrol, gas, or diesel generators can be fed into this inverter. This has 600 volts per MPPT tracker and there's two trackers on it with one string each. So this can take 1200 volts. Again, massive, massive input. Uh, this has a full ATS backup, uh, which is the automatic transfer switch. So again, you'll see a flicker in the lights, but you will not have a dip. Uh, or a turn off of the lights. Now, remains to be seen whether that's within the parameters of acceptability within the regs in Ireland, uh, but you can also set it to be a manual, uh, manual changeover switch. I have yet to see a costing on a unit like this, but uh, they have said that they will be cheaper than SIG Energy. And the backup load is at 63 amps, so that's gonna keep a lot of things running. Now I'm at the solar port stand, and uh, if you've been following me for any time, you'll know that I'm a fan of the solar port equipment. Uh, I have my own DIY ground mount at home, using all the solar port um, damaged parts that I got at a song. And I am looking at a solar port solar tracker. Now I'm a big fan of solar trackers, and if you're not aware of what a solar tracker is, the whole idea is that the solar panel will always face the sun and it will track it as it kind of you know progresses throughout the day and that will give you an optimal yield now this is a utility scale 
solar tracker and it tracks on one axis. Having this single axis tracker, uh, they expect anything from a 15 to a 30% increase in your annual yield. So these are designed to be 70 panels long. They're pile driven, uh, but they are designed to be 70 up to 70 panels long. There's a one geared motor controlling the entire 70 panels. We have the brushless DC motor that will just continue to rotate those panels from negative 60 to positive 60. And instead of an annual maintenance, it actually only was required for uh, five years of maintenance. Now separately, the bolts that uh, are connected onto the arm are pressurized and vibration proof. So if they go through storms or you're suffering with uh, snow, uh, they are because they're pressurized, they will not budge. Now the power is also controlled from the string. So it is a self-powered um, unit with 0.002% of the yield being used to control the motor. Depending on the price, I could see this being a very popular product for SolarPort.